You tend to only hear about someone's net worth when it's a big number, but that figure can help you figure out your own financial goals. To find out how, Mona Lee Locke talked to Tori Dunlap from her first 100K. So net worth is one of the most important numbers when it comes to your finances. It's kind of your adulting GPA. So what your net worth is, is your assets minus your liabilities. So your assets, meaning do you have savings? Do you have investments? Maybe do you own your home? And liabilities is basically your debt. So your net worth is your assets minus those liabilities. I see. And so when you said your adult GPA, that kind of gave me uh, the chills, but not to cause anxiety, right? And, and why is this important for someone to, to know? Yeah, I think it's really the barometer of your financial health, right? If you have a negative net worth or maybe your net worth is at zero, it shows that you maybe can set more you know, ambitious, aggressive financial goals. It's a great barometer depending on your age, how much income you're making, that sort of thing, to determine how financially healthy you are. And so a lot of times you also hear about credit scores, right? And so right. does net worth figure into credit scores? Or are they two totally separate things? That's a great question. Yeah, they're completely separate. Net worth can be more of a personal number, right? That maybe you yourself are tracking to see if you're hitting your financial goals. Your credit score is a more official number that credit bureaus are figuring out, are you a responsible lender, right? Can we give you that loan? Can we give you a mortgage? And so there are two different numbers, but both are super important. So you might do your own tracking or your own measurement of net worth, while credit bureaus are going to come up with a credit score based on things like your credit history, your bill paying, like, are you paying bills on time and in full? So they are two separate numbers. And are there any tricks or, or keys that the folks out there should know about um, their net worth and how to track and, and how to use that to their advantage? Yeah, I think, again, like I said, it is such an important number in terms of how financially healthy are you. So I love using an app called Personal Capital. They're a great way to track uh, your net worth as well as seeing all of your accounts in one place. And that's entirely free, which I think is fantastic. You can also just use a spreadsheet or you can use pencil and paper if you want to go super old school and being able to say, okay, how many pieces of debt do I have? Do I have debt on this credit card? Do I have a mortgage? And then again, what are my assets? Where do I have money in savings? Is that a savings account or is that maybe a 401k as well in addition to do I own you know bigger things of value so a home a car maybe a second property so yeah that's a great way to track it either with personal capital or you can do it on your own and if someone say isn't a big budget tracker isn't big into finances why would that even be important yeah, I think it's financial self-care, right? And we talk about self-care as a society a lot now, and it tends to be like these face masks or bubble baths, and I'm all for that. I love a good face mask in the bathtub with a glass of wine, but that is not really self-care, right? Those are things that are self-soothers, which especially in a pandemic, we need a lot of. But self-care is the hard things, right? Eating a salad when you don't want to eat a salad, going to therapy, having hard conversations with people. It's also looking at your money. So part of your self-care experience or how you're making sure you're taking care of yourself, yourself especially right now, is financial self-care. So don't be an ostrich. Don't bury your head in the sand and act like your problems don't exist. Get really uncomfortable being uncomfortable. So whether that's scheduling what I call a money date with yourself, where you're sitting down for maybe an hour once a month and dedicating yourself to look at your finances or simply downloading an app like Personal Capital or something else to make sure that you're there checking in frequently. It's a great way to practice some financial self-care and get a little comfortable being uncomfortable. I love some, I love those tips, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> They're very easy and very practical. So what do I get from it? Uh, what's my incentive like to do this painful task for some? Right. And I think that that's what self-care is. It's like maybe not the most fun thing in the moment, but you're taking care of future you, right? So giving yourself a strategy around building your net worth, building your savings, lowering your debt can of course mean that you're more financially stable so that when things like a global pandemic hit, maybe you have a little more in savings, right? Or you have more financial stability. And it can also mean that you're accelerating your life, right? Maybe you are, are, uh, are building a goal around buying a house. And by tracking those numbers, you can say, okay, now I know specifically if I save this amount of money during this time, I can buy a house in two years. And you won't know that, right? Unless you start tracking it. And at the same time, you also won't know how much progress you've made unless you track things like your net worth. Because if you don't know, 
right? If you have no idea the progress you've made, it's really hard to stay motivated. So we not only track to make sure that we're on track for our goals, we also look at our net worth numbers and check in to pat ourselves on the back and to keep us motivated. Lots of great advice. Thank you, Mona and Tori for all of that. Many people don't fully understand the seriousness of the pandemic until after someone they know gets sick. Coming up next, we'll hear a firsthand account from a COVID-19 survivor. We'll be back. <laughs>